We're on the hunt for winter stags this week. Alongside Anto for this mission is his good mate, Gordy Watson. But joining them this time is Gordy's teenage son, Dart, named after the famous river that flows through this very region, who's keen to follow in his father's footsteps as a hunting guide and outdoorsman. Well, it's the first night of our hunt. And we'll just sort of beat the feet for about an hour and a half just to get up into a bit of a side catchment. We've got the wind in our favour. And we're just hoping that on last light, or even in the next hour or two, the man will come out of this sort of tighter scrub. It gives us an opportunity to assess it. Well, we've been glassing for the last couple of hours, and we're starting to come into the prime time now. We've got some beautiful country, but it's that hard country to see animals in, but that's actually where they love to be. So we're just going to keep working the glass and see how we go. Sitting still for long periods of glassing during the winter can be a touch uncomfortable. But after an hour or so of patient observation, the first animal is spotted. A couple, yeah. Well, we've finally produced an animal. Looks like a, a red deer. So just checking out whether it's got antlers or whether it's a hind. Long way over, Daddy. Yes. They look like bigger bodied animals. Well, we've been sitting here glassing and seen the odd deer up in the distance. But we've only got an hour of light left, so. Yeah, it's kind of way up, sitting here and hoping for the best or get in there and try and make something happen. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get right in there. We could end up real close if there's something there. Well, we're just making our way up into this wee head basin. Well, this wee catchment off the side of the main valley. Just trying to open up country. It's always a really difficult thing to run an open country while not sacrificing country, so it's a fine balance, so you just got to give it a go. Wet boots in the winter should be avoided at all costs, but Dart's got a surefire way of keeping his feet dry. Can you do the same for me, Anto? Not that strong, but perks of having your dad on the trip, I suppose. The crew continue on, hoping to lay eyes on another stag in a handy position. But the short winter days in this part of the country mean that in the end, they're beaten by the clock. Well, the light's truly gone now, so the head torches are going to come out. Wind's up, not much luck this evening, so we're going to bail out and give it another crack tomorrow. The cloud overnight ensures that it's not too cold to start the following morning. And after a good night's rest, the team make use of the machine to access a new area further down the valley. The plan today is to climb high, right up to the edge of the snow line, where stag can sometimes be found milling about in bachelor groups at this time of the year. So we've just punched up a little bit, and uh, well, it's quite a good morning just here in the distance. Horrible looking front coming our way. We never really know whether it's going to stay up the head or whether it's going to keep pushing down towards us, but we'll see how we go. Bad weather is a variable you simply have to be prepared for when hunting over the winter period. So the team keep one eye on the surrounding hills for game and one eye on the threatening clouds up the valley. Oh, yeah, here we are, boys. Here's a stag, he's got some headgear. So we've just picked up a, a red stag. It's not quite like what we're looking for. He looks to be about an eight pointer. But the real positive thing is he's quite a bit of a gut just behind where he's standing. He's just in view. At this time of year, the stags are typically grouped up, so there's a really good chance there's another one there. So we're going to sit here and keep glassing for a bit, and if we can't get a visual on the something else, we might climb up higher and try and look in on him. Get another one? Yeah, smaller though. Oh, yeah, to the right. So we've got a second one, so it's looking good that there could be a whole pack of them there. Pack of stags. Whilst Anto's vernacular could do with some improving, likewise, the two stags are due with a few more years to improve their trophy potential. So they're left to do their thing. So as expected, that front's starting to push through, so we're going to just make it to the bush here and set up a fly and see if we can wait it out. The dog gun. Yep. The real coffee. Well, we're sort of coming into the middle of the day. The weather's coming not quite as bad as expected. We're right in the boundary of it at the moment, so the front's at us but not hammering us. So we're just watching a bit of a face where we saw the stags earlier. We're just trying to figure out what we do. We're 
we're tempted to stay here, but then there's some other options of dropping back out and climbing into another catchment for evening. The decision is made to climb higher and hopefully open up a view into a promising looking area that's currently hidden by the steep tussock face. I wonder if we can just sit here. So we've made our way up to a bit of a spur, give it a bit more scope, real picturesque location. Quick frozen tarn below, sheer bluff to my left. Uh, so we'll try and stick it out here for as long as we can, but the rain is starting to come in. But we found a bit of shelter with a couple of beech trees on this ridge. It's all well and good being picturesque, but scenic beauty isn't sufficient motivation for the team. They're after an animal. But unfortunately, the next creature that makes itself known isn't exactly the target species. There's a billy goat. Although it does give Captain a chance to show off some great composure. Like that. See, see the very lowest little bit of snow out there? And it's got a bit of scree around it. So it's been working hard on the glass, and Gordy's just picked up a really nice chamois buck. So not too high up, so we could be in the game here. Can you still see him, Anto? No, it's just a bit of you. Yeah, he was decent. Hey, good buck. I wonder if we just get into it. We're going to cut up onto a ridge, so hopefully we can see it from up there. There's no mucking around, umming and ahhing. The sham looked pretty promising from the short glimpse at him. And with few other options on the table, the team continued punching their way uphill to cut the distance. Start you on the trigger, mate. How do you feel? Pretty good. He's trying to find where the chamois went. What are you confident out to shooting range? Um, probably like 300. We'll just make our way up to this rock. We'll have a little look over it. See where it's ended up, eh? Make sure you stay off the edge. a good spot where we thought we might be able to see the chamois. It's tucked over a ridge, we we'll waited for half an hour and he's not showing, so we're going to have to push in there and see if we can catch up with him. It's not an ideal situation, moving into the very area where the chamois was last seen an hour earlier without knowing exactly where it's moved off to, but it's the best option available. Near a mountain of 30 yards from where we saw him standing on the ridge. So we're charging him, he's just dropped off the other side, which we know he did. Hopefully only 100 yards away. Ideally, it would be 200, so we've got a chance to set up. What are you shooting? I'm shooting with a 13 inch with a hardy barrel, muzzle brake on it. The chamois could be tucked up in one of many grassy folds close by, or it may have already made its way into an entirely new catchment. So, as the guys crest the small grassy rise, they're relieved to immediately spot it feeding away on the opposite face. Here he is, but here he is, here he is. I've seen it. It's 200 straight away. See that rock on the skyline? straight towards us. See the real brown scrub? Yep. Just left of the brown scrub. He's looking, he's looking. Just keep movements down. You on him? Got him? Yeah, that's a goodie. Okay, just wait, just wait. Do you feel good, Dad? Yeah. You got him there, Daddy? Yeah. You on full power now? Yeah. Okay. All on you, Dad. All on you, mate. Okay. On him. Okay, load and just go about your business, mate. Just go about it. The buck seems aware that something's up, but rather than bolting off, begins making its way across the far face towards the team. Shit, when you're ready, Dad. When you're ready, mate. You ready? Yeah. Darts hit the buck. Hit them, reload, give it another one. But it's not a lethal connection. Oh, Daddy, give him one more. It's in that shoulder. So an immediate follow-up shot is required. Yeah, boy. Yeah! He's good going boy. down now. Good boy. Yeah. OK. Nice. Mate, that's a good shot. Well done. It's hard to say whether he was onto us or not. He started feeding again. But uh, at 200 yards, you don't want to sort of mess around with Shemi. And Darts done two real good shots. First one was pretty good, but... Never take chances in this country, otherwise it can just turn to custard. Awesome, man. Well done. Yeah. Champion. Good job, mate. Good job. He's well down a little bit too. Make that retrieval quite a lot easier, man. Uh, yeah. Be good. He's come down the snow, eh? That'll be good. Get Captain on his little blood trail. It was moving a tad bit on that first shot, so it hit a bit behind. A bit of pressure with these guys around, but animals down, so that's all good. Hey, Jim. Well, we're a bit lucky. Gordy's volunteered to go over the creek and 
drag him down a bit lower for us, so it makes our job a lot easier. Good boy. Good boy. Well, he's managed Good to find it. How's he look, Gordy? Oh, mate, he's nice. He's uh, got some good hooks on him. He's heavy. Maybe a little shorter than we first thought, but he's great representative, man. You know, good job. Oh, that's awesome. All right, we'll, um, we'll meet you down in the creek and we'll get the billy going. Mean man. Wow, he's a wicked sham, dark. Oh, he's a really good buck. He's got extremely thick bases, good hooks. He's also got a bit of age on him. He's got a few growth rings there. Good work, Dart. Well done, mate. Well, I'm pretty pleased he's a buck. Like, I do rate my abilities to make good assessments, but our last chamois trip with Sam was a bit disappointing with the last animal we got ending up being a nanny. But in this case, 200 yards. Can't really make a mistake there. Awesome representative trophy. Drop that chin down on the chamois, touch. Touch more. Yeah. Nice one. It may not have been the trophy stag the team set out for, but it's a worthy prize nonetheless. One that's been earned through patience and perseverance, and certainly no shortage of grit. The fellas have had to climb high from the valley floor to get into this position. And with the ever-threatening weather now taking a turn for the worse, they've got quite a descent ahead of them. But at least they're not in any danger of overheating. The descent also gives them time to actually soak in the beauty of the surrounding countryside, which despite the light rain falling, is turning into quite a spectacular evening. Dropping altitude is certainly a lot easier on the body, and the guys can now simply follow a prominent ridgeline down without the need to remain out of sight. However, care still needs to be taken. Wet tussock is notoriously slippery, so they can't afford to become too immersed in the stunning surroundings. Great sight to see the Polaris. It's been a big day climbing right up into the snow line, but it's been a successful one. Dart's got an awesome chamois. Even better, we're now at the wheels, so we're going to get back to the hut, dry off. It's been a bit of testing with the rain coming in and out all day. Do you what? Another good day, bro. Make me proud again. You've done pretty well, man. After spending close to two hours working their way off the hill, it's bloody nice to have the machine to save the shanks from another hour or so on the flats. And the team are soon back at HQ and keen to run a measure over Dart Sham. We're back at the hut. There's a few wages on uh, what the D-man's buck's gone. We'll try to get the most out of it down here. Oh, and look who won. Max nine. Yeah, I thought he was nine. Just over. Just over. I was on nine and a quarter. So we're all pretty close, like, and that's what it comes down to. When you're measuring these things, we all were within eighths of an inch of each other, and that's how tight these margins are, eh? It's crazy. Yeah. It's a real bonus having a nice warm hut with a roaring fire to regroup and recharge for the next day's mission. But the inclement weather the following morning doesn't inspire confidence or look terribly inviting for hunting. So given it was a bloody long day prior, the team treat themselves to a bit of a lion. Eventually, with a hot breakfast under the belt and fresh set of dry clothes on the back, they head back out in the Polaris in search of more adventure. Well, despite getting up pretty early this morning with high expectations of getting out and about, it was bucketing down. So we sort of laid around in bed a bit longer than usual, had a few coffees, and we've now had a bit of a break from the weather. It's mid-morning, and we're going to head off and try and set ourselves up for an evening hunt. If it's raining, we're going to have to bunker up in the trees a bit, but we're going to figure out how we go. On a day like this, the machine certainly provides peace of mind, as it allows the guys to pack a bit of extra gear to shelter under that could be essential should conditions collapse later in the day. Plus, every metre in altitude gained by the machine means there's one less to climb and one less to descend, which will make a huge difference should the fellas taste success with a big red stag later in the day. We've got up the hill away way in the machine, so now we just have to beat the feet to make the most of the opportunity. Nice one. Well, it's our second full day we've got of hunting. 
flags, as we talked about earlier, not paying us any favours, but the rain has stopped and uh, we're just going to a few hundred metres altitude in the Polaris. Now it's time to beat the feet. So we just pushed up a bit from the machine. Made ourselves into a bit of a starting to pace it out a little bit. Nice bush edge to check out. Weather's still not perfect, so we've just got a bit of protection here from the beech trees. And it's only lunchtime, so we've got a bit of time to kill. But we may as well be watching a face with this potential for something to come out. So we've been glassing in the spot for about 15 minutes. And we've just started to pick up a few groups of hinds. Or well, small group of hinds and one more deer, which we're just trying to identify at the moment. Two does, I think. I think a large doe and a yearling. As a team set to work picking over the hill face, it seems it helps having a younger pair of eyes to aid in the glassing. Oh look, there's three. There's three there now. There's four, isn't there? Is that another one? Oh, is it a fifth? There's five. There's six, actually. Here's the sixth one just down the bank a bit. I can only see five. It's been too long out of school, mate. There's only five. No, oh, one's just hiding. It's just on that bank there, it's pretty hard to see. So far, the team have only been able to locate hinds and spikers, but there's a massive amount of country in front of them in which to glass, so they just need to stick at it and hope that something with a bit more headgear eventually shows itself. That is a team favourite. <sighs> just gone past lunchtime and had ourselves a good feed. Warmed ourselves up a wee bit because it's a bit of a chillier. It was steam a few hinds, got a good group on the ridge line over here. Well, it's excited us a bit more. It's about 300 metres above them. There's a spiker. We're hoping that spiker's actually got a couple of big brothers with it. So we're going to really pay a lot of attention on it and see if something else stands out. There's another deer with those that spiker, I think. Probably. You notice how they're all eating those brown bushes? They're not eating the ground. Unfortunately, after spending a good few hours glassing the face, nothing of note is seen. Well, that last wee spot didn't produce any further animals, just the same ones we've been seeing already. So again, we're moving position. The key sometimes is just to keep moving. So we're gonna do that, look over into the new catchment. Considering the way the day began, with the thick fog and steady rain, it's been a treat for the team just getting out on the hill and seeing animals. But with dust fast approaching, it seems they're going to be heading back to base camp empty handed. Just come to the end of a pretty hard glass session. Didn't see any more animals than what we saw earlier. But we're going to have the whole day tomorrow, so hopefully we'll make something happen. It's good to see the team are staying positive despite the relative lack of success. But with just one day left up their sleeve, they're going to need to pull out all the stops that they intend to end the mission on a high. The fellas are up and away early the following morning. There's been a bit of fresh snowfall, so the strategy today is to get right up into the high terrain in the hope that a few animals living in the upper reaches may have moved lower overnight. So it's the last full day of hunting. We sort of haven't been able to get onto a red stag at the moment, so we've just been pushing our way higher today. We're in sort of the mixed terrain. There could be a red stag somewhere. Otherwise, if a chamois pops out, it could be in trouble as well. We'll see how we get on. Well, we sort of bunkered it out for about an hour there, mid-morning. You know, we've had a bit of sun poke through the clouds, so it's time to start moving again. Our plan of attacks just to keep hunting our way through different little catchments and see what pops out. Plenty of nice country, but we haven't picked up much at the moment at all. Just a matter of persisting, really. The weather's certainly improving, so it's boating well for a good day in comparison to what it started off like. In winter, the animals don't move around anywhere near as much, so you have to find them. So it's a matter of just putting the footwork in. Another glass here, Gordy. Well, one place I like to stop when glassing, something with a little bit of shelter in this case is a perfect rock, provides a bit of dryness. The other factor is we're sitting on fresh sign now, so the animals are using these sorts of places as well. This time of year it's cold. When the weather comes in, you want to be protected. Protection from the elements is one thing, 
but there's no point dropping anchor too long, and the best way to stay warm is to simply keep moving. It's like a glass and hard. I just heard a shabby whistle. OK, I've seen it, I've seen it. There's a big rock face here, yeah. and behind you've got the next ridge. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Oh, up the top here, get your gun ready, Gordy. We're coming up the side here. After an extremely quiet morning with zero game animals spied, it seems that when it rains, it pours, as the chamois start appearing all over the place. There's two going up that grassy chute. Get that steep rock. See that knob knobby rock? I can't see at the moment. I just I, need I'm to... on one. Which ones are you guys actually looking at? Gordy's looking at a different one. The one that's running uphill at the moment, is that the one you're taking? Is that a shot? Oh, no, he's just... Oh, see those going across oh, the lift through there? Way up there. Where, where, where? They're just going through that gap. Oh, yep, sprinting, sprinting. That one's gone. I can see the other one up the top of the chute. Well, I think oh, the middle he's of talking the rock. right towards us. Oh, look, Dave, oh, oh, yeah, Dave, from these. Right here. Right Suddenly, two young bucks come barreling down the hillside directly towards the team. Okay, we've got two shimmy coming right towards us. Is he good? No, he's too no. small. These two that have just come past us are too small. There's still a good one up the top. So go back to the top one. Yeah. Okay, I'm just looking at the top one, Gordy. You get on that top one, he's got good length. Where, where are we looking? Where, where I put the scope before. He's standing there, same spot. Yeah, running across the creek. He's about to go over, over the creek. Okay, this bottom one's bursting downstream. That one, on, that one that you can see, Gordy, is the nanny. There's a buck beside it somewhere though. Yep, that's the nanny, isn't it? Well, it's not a buck worth shooting, that's for sure. Going back to feeding, so the buck will be beside it somewhere. I thought that buck went up to shoot over here. So it's been a bit of chaos. We had two come racing down to us, one within about 15 metres. And we've got a large nanny up the top that's gone back to feeding, and there's definitely a buck with it with a real nice big dorsal strip. Um, we have seen it, but it just hasn't given us a decent opportunity to assess it. The weather's starting to come in right now, which is making things tough. We've still got a nanny that we can see, and we know there's a the better buck of the group is with it. So we're just hoping it's going to show itself so we can assess it. So we managed to catch a glimpse of the buck up higher, but it was when the rain was just coming down, didn't get a chance to really assess him properly. He's fed into a gut, well not really fed, he's followed the nanny into a gut, out of view, so we're going to push up and get into a position to have a good look. Working Gordy? Oh, he looked all right. He was a busy wee moment back there for a while, but... We could, if we come up here, we're going to open them up, open up a bit of ground and maybe see them again. In the alpine environment, you have to take opportunities as they present themselves, especially when the weather's complicating matters. So the team pressed back up to the large rock to use for shelter from the worsening conditions. You've got the top point, yeah, and behind it you've got that patch of snow. Oh, yeah, yeah. And just to the left of that, I'm pretty sure that's our buck. He's looking down at us. Yeah. I think I see him. Like distance body there. Distance butt. His head's feeding at the moment. Big rock that the snow hits up against. He's about 20 metres up from the snow. Not big enough. With the freezing rain coming and going, and the chamois still a little on edge, the guys now have to wait for things to settle down a touch. But whilst the team do their best to tough it out glassing directly into the wind and rain, cameraman Dave decides to point his long lens camera up belly, where he soon lays eyes on a new mob. Anto? Yeah? I've got another one looking down at something. There's another one with it, there's a buck yeah. with it, a good buck with it. It's just coming walking up, that was what he's looking down at. It's almost like it's in heat, man. So that the left one's a buck. See with its mane up? That's the one with the dorsal stripe, though, eh? It's a promising looking buck, but he's still some way off. The back one's a buck that's worth shooting, like definitely worth shooting. It's a long way from there, let's hope it comes around. We've popped up here and we've been watching what looks like either a young buck or a nanny. And then um, trying to figure out where the second one had gone and then two popped up further away. And one's quite a good buck and he's acting like he's rutting. It's definitely not the rut. He's got his mane all high up and he's following a nanny around towards us. So we're going to hold tight here. And hopefully it walks around because us an even better view of it. He looks pretty good. Unfortunately for the team, the promising looking buck slinks off into the steep gut and isn't seen again. Well, we got up to a good angle to check out some of the chamois. Initially, we just saw one, and in the distance saw another couple. One went right round and out of the catchment, and it wasn't what we're after. And then the better one of all of them just hasn't showed itself, but it's a long way up. The weather's coming in. 
So we're just going to say goodbye to the close one that was sitting there at about 350 yards. We'll make our way down. The weather may be terrible and the team may be empty handed, but there's nothing like a hot lunch and a brew to help keep spirits up. Beef? How do you say that? I'm not, even, I'm not even game to have a go, but man, I'm game to eat it. You on the coffee start? A wee bit. Fancy coffee machine you got there, bro. Yeah, it's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> it's the Dart 1000. It's the walk and talking version. With a pep in their step, the guys continue on with renewed vigour, moving their way down from the craggly country up near the snow line to the rolling tussock country. But there's still a couple of testing obstacles to navigate. So we're just coming into prime time now. We were just up there, we were seeing a little chamois around the corner there. And we're just making our way down through some terraces. Hopefully we'll pick up a stag on the way back to the hut. What's the feeling amongst the campers there, Gordon? Soggy. Soggy feeling. But warm. Too warm. Too warm. Too warm. started off to be a pretty exciting morning on the chamois hasn't resulted in much more later on. Sort of made our way through those nice terraces and yeah, tough one to hunting if you can't find the animals we're after. But the exciting thing is we're gonna strip off and get dry shortly we're off to the hut to warm up. Frustrating days like these are just part of hunting. You can't expect success every time you head out in search of big game. But by putting in the miles and staying positive throughout, hopefully the trio have banked a bit of good karma for any potential return missions. Well, that's the end of our few days out in the winter mountains. It's been a pretty awesome few days. Particularly dark getting that real nice chamois. That was a bit of a highlight. But I feel like I haven't really scratched the itch of this country. So there's a good chance we'll be back. Nine months later, we pick up the action with the same crew in the same location. Although in a different season and in a flash new set of wheels. So we're just getting out another mission. This time we're in a new beast of a Polaris. This is the North Star. It comes with all the bells and whistles. Last year, we sort of couldn't get up here during the raw period because of COVID. We come in during winter and Duck got himself a really nice chamois buck. But this time we're targeting stags and we're right in the heart of the raw at the moment. So things are looking good. Windows are good. Come up here on a frosty morning. <laughs> you'd have this at places where you're camping. You'd get up out of your tent, you'd turn this on, turn the heater on, get in, <laughs> get in here and have your coffee. Yeah, you almost need a fold out bed in it, eh? Well, despite the luxury of the Polaris, you eventually have to beat the feet. And, uh, with the evening coming along pretty quick now that we've gone past daylight savings, we've punched our way up the hill, gained about 250 metres of altitude. And as the light starts to fade, we're just going to punch into some feed guts and see if we can bump into a stair. The first evening follows the same formula as the first hunt, with the evening glassing session proving fruitless. And frustratingly, given that it's early April, not a single roar is heard over the course of the afternoon and evening. Well, unfortunately nothing seen tonight. But the uh, brilliant thing is we've got a couple of days up our sleeves, so tomorrow morning we'll be up sharp and on our way into a good country. Day and uh, got to beat the feet for a while yet. 
We've got a crisp, cool morning, so we're hopeful we're going to start hearing some stags roaring in the next couple of hours. A bit of luxury this morning, being able to cruise up the valley with the heaters going. Sort of, yeah, good way to start the day, but hopping out makes you ready to get walking. The chill doesn't last long, and the fellas soon fall back into their regular routine, bashing their way up the valley floor under head torch through the bush line towards the open tussock country that runs all the way up to the steep peaks they'd explored in their previous mission. It's a stunning morning and shaping up to be a bluebird day. And as the light strengthens, there's not a single cloud in the sky. But on a more negative note, there's also not a single animal to be seen or even heard. But the day is still young. And there's certainly no shortage of epic terrain for the big boy to be parked up in, waiting for the sun to warm his flanks. And sure enough, their persistence pays off, as finally a good looking stag is spotted. What kind of distance are we talking about? Wow, oh, probably looks about two k's away. So I've been glassing for a bit and I've managed to pick up a couple of hinds and what looks to be a pretty awesome stack. So just trying to use the phone scope and the spotting scope to evaluate them. But he is a long way away. It's 2.2 k's over there. I think we get on that ridge, get up above him, get on that knob, do a bit of phone scoping just for a last assessment. But we know he's a thumper. We'll be above him, we'll have that day breeze pushing up. There he goes, he's out in the open now. He's a thumper, that one. So phone scope does two things. One, we can video stuff, which is pretty cool, but it can mean you can assess them after you've caught a good clip. You're able to push in further on your phone as well. It really makes the most of your crisp optics that you've got to punch out a long way. He's, he's roaring. Oh, there's two stacks there. Oh, three stacks. Yeah, there's another one coming down the hill here. That's a smaller one, but still quite good. He looks like a eight or a ten. Well, that'll be keeping him busy. And if he's chasing those hinds, they're probably cycling, so um, that's good for us. It's a great looking stag, all right. And the fact that he's holding a few hinds bodes well for the guys, as so long as they don't wander off, he's likely to remain in the general vicinity. But rather than simply making a beeline for the stag, the team stop at each new vantage point to cast an eye around for any other animals that may be close by. Whilst it's always a buzz to see a stag up close, the guys will need to be careful as they make their way up into the spot where the big stag was seen, as bumping a lesser animal or a group of hinds could quite easily spook him. And judging by the amount of sign around, there seems to be a fair few animals living in the area. Quite a fresh rubbing, this one. A lot of trees just through this area being scraped up. It's obviously something they do when they're getting rid of their velvet, but when they're in full raw mode, they tend to thrash a few more trees as well. Now pushing in, trying to close the gap between where we've glassed the big stag and where he's hanging out. And it's evident there's some deer around here, like this is a big wallow. So for those that don't know what a wallow is, it's an area that the stags sort of come to set themselves up. But they mark their territories a little bit. It's not as evident as a rut pad like the fellow on Whitetail and whatnot. But it's an area that they certainly frequent to sort of make themselves stinky, make themselves known. It's not used quite as much in the middle of the raw when they're on the hinds. It's kind of one of those things they do as they're leading into the raw period. Really make it evident that they're in charge in the area. The guys continue on, using the cover of the native beach, hoping to gain enough elevation before the sun's heat begins to shift wind currents upwards. There's a fair bit of windfall to navigate through, and it's tinder dry underfoot, but the snapping of twigs and branches isn't too big a deal as any stags moving about this country would make a similar racket. So I've busted out into the top, so 
on kind of on an even elevation to where we saw the stag earlier. Wind's been our favourite at the moment, but now that we're in close proximity, anything could happen at any time. So we've slowed right down and we're on full alert. Stag's moving around a fair bit, probably keeping track of multiple hinds. And given that the sun's now well up in the sky, the team needs to act fast if they hope to get a shot at him yep. before he beds down for the day. Yeah, we managed to get onto the stag that we're looking for. He's been cut about 400 yards away. Camera's underneath. Can you go forward at all? Big Stag is agonisingly close to presenting an opportunity for a shot. He continues to move about the far bush edge, but he really needs to cut some distance, as Dart can't afford to squeeze off until he's within 400 metres in broadside. So he's forced to simply watch as his potential trophy strolls away out of sight. Just waiting, mate. Yeah, yeah. He's going around the back of the bush. How's the heart rate? Oh, she's up there. Definitely up. So this morning after we saw the stag bedded down, we gained a bit more country to get a wee bit closer and as we did that he got up on his feet and actually started to herd his hinds back towards the bush. By that stage he'd sort of got out to over 500 metres and weren't keen on a shot at that distance really, knowing that we got the opportunity with an undisturbed animal. So watched him actually head into the bush and now we've been waiting out for the last sort of four or five hours of the heat of the day waiting for him but we've just come on 3.30 we're after daylight savings so we're actually getting close to game time we're confident he's still in the bush we've had a perfect uphill breeze all day and so we're sitting about 500 from where we last saw him so it may seem silly but uh, every time we head out in the morning we don't know whether we're going to be heading back successful or waiting until last light so we're always carrying a extra bit of food and a jet ball with us just means that you can get organised in the middle of the day or the afternoon and sort of hunt all night and all evening. The team stay vigilant throughout the afternoon, keeping an eye on the far bush edge as they continue to play every hunter's least favourite pastime, the waiting game. Far above them, another stag is spotted. He's following some hides. This is a good sign, as it may entice the larger stag the team were waiting out to reappear especially if he thinks a rival may be trying to poach his patch. But unfortunately, as the afternoon burns out and the evening shadows lengthen, there's still no movement. But the fat lady hasn't started singing just yet. The team spotted a cracking stag earlier in the morning, but after climbing high into position to take a shot, they had the window of opportunity slam shut just as things were looking good. Having sat out the rest of the day in hope of the big stag reappearing, they now have just an hour of light left in which to make some magic happen and pull a rabbit out of the hat. So we've been waiting out all day. And the same lines that the stag followed into the bush have just popped out. So we're going to get down into a position ready. So if the stag steps out, we're ready to go. After the trials and tribulations from the previous mission, it would be a crying shame to have to walk off the hill in the dark, empty handed yet again. But as they say, good things come to those who wait. 
The big stack, the big stack. It's just coming out on the edge of the top there. Yep. Okay, bring your gun around. Take it, move to the left of it. He's gonna naturally come across. I reckon we let him come closer. Okay, he's coming down that gut. He's coming up onto that white piece. Can you see him on that? Yep, yep, yep. The stag's doing Dart a massive favour by cutting the distance dramatically and is now within 400 metres, but he seems to be on a bit of a mission, not stopping to present a viable shot. This we range. Okay, he's just under 400. When you're ready, and he goes side on, we're going to take him. Finally, the stag stops, possibly catching sight of the hinds below him, so now it's all up to Dart to make his shot count. Okay, take him when you're ready. Let's wait for him. Yep, now he's perfect. Yep, good hit, good hit. He's down, he's down, man. That is a ripper. Pretty excited about that. That's been a all day event. <laughs> it's um, pretty exciting when it comes down to this. And it, Cameraman even starts putting the pressure on you that we've got to make it happen. That light was dropping, mate, so you did a good job. Yeah, good shooting, <laughs> man. Well done. That's awesome. That's a bloody good stand. Yeah. <laughs> good stuff, Daddy. Man, that's pressure cooker stuff, eh? <laughs> <laughs> that was fair pressure cooker stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, how were your nerves? Because I was feeling it. <laughs> Big time. Yeah. What a way to wrap up the day and the team are quite rightly eager to get over and check out the spoils of victory up close. Oh man, man, this is cool. Well, this has been a um, pretty cool day overall. Like, waking something out like that just adds to the whole, the whole scenario. And a stag like that doesn't come around very often. He's a big daddy. He's 14, mate. He's lower down on pedicles. You can see he's lost a bit of conditioning. Running around. Well, light's already starting to fade, so we're going to get into this cup, getting a couple of good photos nice and quick. And then we'll take our time butchering and how long it takes to get off the hills is what it is. Do that wee one there. You're going to do the carry, mate? Is, it, is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, it's a wee way to go. <laughs> it's worth the pain. Yeah, yeah. Patience, eh? Hey? It's just. It's, it's, because then I started going thinking, man, should we have taken him at close to 500 when he was standing there for ages? Yeah. But you used to have... In the end, 400? 350 in the end. Okay. In these scenarios, when you've got rifles capable of shooting a lot further, you start to wonder whether you should be taking the shot or not taking the shot. And it's all ethical. However, nothing beats a deer that's closer. So if you can hold out, the chances of success just increase so much, it's not funny. Teamwork makes the dream work, as they say, and it seems all the effort made in the earlier trip has finally paid off for the guys. But there's still a fair bit of work to be done before the day's over. Not in great nick, eh? Oh, he's just um, been doing the miles on the hill, I'd say, and out in the town partying with the girls and not eating all his greens. Hold that up there, bro. Don't let it go, because it'll clock me. So the stag should you might have seen earlier in the season had acres of fat on them. That's because they'd been feeding up over the summer, getting prepared for the raw period. But this guy's probably been, what are we coming up to? April 7th today. So this guy could have been sort of working the herd for about three or four weeks even. So condition just starts to drop away rapidly. And this guy's definitely, definitely lost a lot of condition. He may have been being knocked off being the top dog. The other stag that was up top, he was acting pretty aggressive and seemed to be holding the hinds. So, he might just be a bit tired, this guy. Certainly wasn't moving around very quick. There we go, Daddy. One of these. We'll get that other one off. With all the meat divvied up amongst the team, the packs are much heavier for the descent than they were for the climb. But as promised, Dart's not shirking his carrying duties. Good on you, mate. Made to measure. Good shit, boys. That was good. Yep, that was exceptional. 
And we're off. We've done it again, Daddy. Crack that, you beauty. Oh, nice, man. Back to the machine. Taste of success.